So short answer is no, but context is very important for this as well. So um, one, I think it's great that people are more health conscious and I think we're seeing a lot more people, um, you know, thinking about their health and being more sort of questioning what am I putting into my mouth, what am I putting into my body um, and making sure it's in line with, you know, healthy eating, which I think is great. Now, where the context comes from is, so for athletes and particularly cyclists, generally it's gonna be an endurance sport. And if we look at a typical training week, it's very endurance based. We've got a lot of hours on the bike. First and foremost, we know that exercise and particularly in, um, aerobic and, and endurance exercise is very great at um, helping reduce the risk of type two diabetes. And for those who already have two type diabetes, we know that exercise is gonna be great for blood glucose management as well. So the, the most important thing to understand here is that consuming gels, sports drinks, um, bars, you know, fruit, food products, sugar flasks, sugar water, all of those things on the bike or during exercise, particularly endurance exercise or high intensity exercise, um, is very different to sitting there on the couch smashing a glass of sugar water as you're watching TV at the end of the night. Yep. So during ice cream, <laughs> during ice, ice cream, ice cream. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, so how's it different? So when we exercise, our body is um, using or breaking down that sugar component um, into glucose, and then using that immediately on the bike. So, and this is why it's very um, important to understand your requirements for the intensity, for the duration, all those sorts of things as well. So often, you know, we've spoken about this in previous videos, a lot of the time what I see is people underfueling on the bike, which then is then leading to overeating later in the day. Backending their day. Backending their day. Yeah, we've spoken about that even with your self cam. Yep. Um, but I think what was really important to understand is when we consume carbohydrates on the bike, the muscles are using that energy immediately or you know, during that form of exercise. So it's very different. The uptake of, of glycogen and glucose sorry, is, is, is um, much more efficient than when you're at rest and sedentary. So yeah. that's really important to understand. Um, and that's why I'm a big advocate for fueling appropriately and um, you know, what some people would call more aggressively on the bike than they think that they need because it helps improve um, the absorption rate and uh, the uptake of um, glucose into the muscles, which is then promoting performance and getting better impact from your training. Um, but that's also then not contributing to um, your type two diabetes risk because we're using that sugar straight up. No, because the muscles are taking it straight away and then using it. So, um, and it actually, and we've got research to suggest that by endurance exercise and then high carbohydrate diets, but timing again, so that's the context is timing of those carbohydrates. Um, can actually improve insulin sensitivity. And that's oh, wow. the thing is that, you know, people are concerned about the insulin sensitivity, um, which again is very important um, concern to have, particularly in a world where we have a lot of processed carbohydrates at our fingertips, but timing of this is important. So whilst you're exercising, um, as well as like using your pre-training snack, so that's why it becomes important to have a pre-training snack. And then in that kind of immediate post-training window, um, insulin sensitivity is improved during exercise and then particularly for well-trained athletes. So the more you do it, the better you get at using that carbohydrate content um, for the exercise. Um, and it's also improved immediately post-exercise. So again, your uptake of glucose is much quicker than it is if you were sitting on the couch not doing anything. So you're essentially you're using them um, very effectively. Okay. Yep. So where it becomes important is, and, and I suggest this with all, all of um, my cyclists is, you know, and this is why I think um, it's great to be working with a sports dietitian um, and then also having some baseline bloods and things like that, understanding your own medical history. So do you, um, uh, you know, have a, a genetic predisposition to type two diabetes, meaning there's some family history of that. Um, if you're currently overweight and you're overeating, mm. um, then we want to sort of look at the other food that you're eating off the bike, not necessarily on the bike. We're still going to take that into consideration, but it's looking at the whole picture. And this is why, you know, with everything, both in nutrition as well as sports nutrition, mm. is that so much context specific and then so much individualized as well. Mm. So people will say sugar increases the risk of type two diabetes. Yes, that's correct. Mm. But timing of that sugar is very important because if we're using it appropriately and the muscles are using it immediately during exercise, it's not going to increase your risk of type two diabetes so long as um, and not that so long, sorry. It's more so that we still look at your overall diet and make sure that you're eating correctly 
off the bike. Mm. Um, on the bike, as long as you're using it and you've got the intensity and you've got the duration, if you're having 90 grams of carbohydrates and you're on the bike for 30 minutes, potentially, and you're not a well-trained athlete, potentially you're having too much. Yes. So it's understanding, you know, what is my current risk? Um, how much training am I doing? How much carbohydrate do I need? Um, and again, all of those things become very individualized. And that's why, you know, I'm working with, with the cyclists to get a really good understanding of their base health, their base diet, um, and then what their requirements are for their specific training program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's not that almond croissants are necessarily good for you. Yeah. However, <laughs> timing of that, um, you know, the breaking that, that um, carbohydrate down into the bloodstream and then utilizing that is gonna be much more effective immediately post-training than it is six, seven hours after you finish the session um, when you're on, on the couch watching TV. Mm. Um, so timing is very crucial. Um, and, you know, I think it's important to understand that, you know, if we fuel appropriately during um, pre and post training sessions, um, your body is getting the fuel that it's need. It, one, it's training at a higher, um, uh, you know, potentially a higher rate or a higher performance rate because you're actually giving it the fuel that it needs. Mm. So if the timing is really important in and, um, in and around training sessions, and then if we get that part right, because your body has got the fuel that it needs to support that training session, um, you're gonna be less hungry as you get off the bike, but also from a um, timing perspective, what we often see for people who are is they get really, really hungry a couple of hours later. Um, so for a lot of cyclists, they train in the morning. If they underfuel, we'll see them, you know, get through the morning part of the day pretty well, but it's that afternoon time and particularly then after dinner that it's like the sugar cravings come in and they sort of, in that sort of animal instinct mode, I need energy that's gonna come generally in the form of a, a high sugar because our body knows that's what gives us energy quite quickly. Yeah. And that can often be the case because you haven't fueled properly on the bike. Mm. So yes, if we can bring that carbohydrate in and around training more so, you're generally not gonna crave sugar as much later in the day. So people shouldn't therefore really be worried about type two diabetes provided they're eating well off the bike yep. and obviously they need to consider their history situation absolutely if they were type one diabetic different story and absolutely need to be working with your doctor and sports dietitian yep. um type two again get your blood tests get your regular check-ins i'm always a big advocate for for going and having your regular blood test with your doctor mm -hmm. um, and just getting an understanding and tracking it because everyone's body is going to be slightly different mm -hmm. so you're looking to make sure that you are taking care of yourself first and foremost but if you're eating well and eating a well-balanced diet off the bike if you're having your sugary um, products or high carbohydrate products on the bike you shouldn't be concerned about type 2 diabetes risk yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we have an RCA 12-week um, nutrition program. Yep. Um, so basically that just involves, you know, your initial consultation um, with, with myself. Um, we go through all of that history, your training, um, your requirements, foods you do like, foods you don't like, um, all of these important things that we create a specialised plan for you. And then you've got a 12-week program to work with. So um, we'll link that below. Cool. Thank you very much.